It's the spooky season again, people, and for this year's Halloween build, I'm gonna make a life-size replica of the Emperor of Mankind from the 40K universe. Because in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only spooks. I'm addicted to skull and bones even when it's not Halloween. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you like me, don't you? So when I saw my local hardware stores selling this 2.4 meter tall skeleton, I immediately bought one and had no idea what I should do with it until I floated around the studio and Dave from Tabletop Time and fellow 40K enthusiast suggested I make the Emperor of Mankind, who is a giant, I was immediately hooked on the idea. So let's see how tall he is. Now I have to say, first impression, opening the box, this thing is gonna be bigger than I expected. I mean, I know it says the size of the skeleton, but I don't know, part of me always thinks you buy a silly plastic skeleton and you get something underwhelming. Well, I did pay $400 for this thing, so fortunately it has surpassed my expectations. So much so that my widest lenses in this warehouse can't even fit it on camera. Now, I'm six foot tall. Space Marines are seven to eight foot tall. Primarchs and the Emperor, I genuinely think this is actually to scale. I think this is as tall as the Emperor is meant to be in the Warhammer 40K universe. Oh, and I even, I totally neglected to realize it's powered. It does stuff. <laughs> ah! I don't know if that's given Emperor vibes. <laughs> oh my God. I thought I could use the box he came in to help make his throne. The only problem is it's nowhere near big enough. So I'm gonna need some more boxes. All right, this should be enough boxes to build the golden throne. Most of these boxes have been deconstructed and many have been dumpster dived from industrial warehouses. When I've rebuilt all my boxes and identified the useful ones, I can start to figure out the shape of the throne. This is a 98 inch television box, which I think will be a perfect backing for our throne. How good is that? Do you know when we moved into the studio, I'll be like, this is big enough for everything I'm gonna make. Literally like the last few projects have started to feel pretty tight. What was it I said in that Zelda project again? If I ever think about going bigger than this, please stop me because it won't be physically possible. <laughs> that was two weeks ago. <laughs> For the box uh, enthusiasts, this video will uh, hit the spot, I'm hoping. I like that box. That is a nice box. Now it's time to get a little bit more finessed. Starting to cut and shape some of these boxes into a little bit more of a gothic architecture vibe. After all, that is the 40K aesthetic. Think gothic cathedrals and big, dark, looming, colossal structures. After a whole day, I have the bones of my throne ready to go. The giant peaked foundation of what will become the golden throne. I am drenched in sweat after another full body workout, but tomorrow is the day that we adorn the throne in all of the details that will make it come to life. And uh, I think I'm gonna need some help for that. I'm gonna get Murray's help to work on this, our biggest build ever. How are you feeling about this one, Murray? Tall. <laughs> and you know what? I think because the law of the Emperor in 40K is so weird and wonderful, I might tell you a little bit throughout the video. The law of 40K? No, that's my job. It's me, Dave from Table to Time, and I'm going to tell you okay. all about yeah, the Emperor from Warhammer 40K. What if we? Is he Let's a god? Let's just spread it throughout the, the video. The Emperor is a deity that everyone worships. He's been in the history of humanity since its very earliest days. Humanity spread across the entire galaxy, making a great star empire that ruled the galaxy. Unfortunately, their hubris led to their collapse, and after a little while, this man emerged from the ruins, deciding he was going to unite mankind. And he led a series of wars called the Unification Wars on Terror, forcing all of the barbarian clans under his thumb. And after a few hundred years of miserable war, the Emperor stood as the unquestioned ruler of mankind. After wrestling Dave to get the camera back, Murray and I did a bit of brainstorming as to some of the shaping that we could do to the main structure of our throne. All of the references we have are very different from each other, so we have a lot of creative liberty here. While we get started on that, I'm going to bring someone else into this project who's great at making delightfully f***ed up s***. 
like this. This is Amy, our resident Halloween enthusiast who makes all sorts of horrifying corrupted things and leaves them scattered around the office in the month of October. And she suggested this really cool method of getting this decaying vibe, which I thought I might actually just get her help to do on the skeleton. If you could take out God Emperor of Mankind oh. uh, and basically do a similar thing that you've done here, uh -huh. here, no worries. have fun. Happy Halloween. Ooh. So first things first, for me, I took this Tong Yang box, which split in half perfectly fits as pillars on either side of the throne. And then with these two matching Breville fan boxes that also are exactly the same width, I turned those into sort of spire tops that I could put atop each of those pillars. Meanwhile, my task was to beautify the front of the armrests as they were looking a bit basic. We wanted to have nice trim on them and then some inset designs, sort of like cathedrals, so nice archways that we can inset some skulls in. And you'll notice that we're wearing masks intermittently because at the same time, at the other side of the room, Amy has been doing all sorts of melty goodness. The method she has to sort of make this strained, fleshy, decomposing surface is to sort of use food wrap, clumped and clustered, and to heat and melt it and shape it with a heat gun so that it becomes tight and sticks to the surface, but also create those torn, fleshy textures. Now I wanted to set about locking in a final silhouette for our throne by figuring out the top, which so far has just been this boring pointy triangle. So by measuring and cutting a piece of foam that fits exactly in the middle and subdividing it in loads of different ways so it looked like I was figuring out the mathematical equation for the flower of life, I eventually emerged with a bit of an architectural design that I felt was reminiscent of Gothic cathedrals. All right, we have a throne and we have an emperor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave, perfect yes. timing. Can I get a, uh, an accuracy check for the 40K emperor? Well, sort of. He's kind of lore accurate. You see, there's an entire galaxy of human populations from their previous empire that are lost and alone out there in space. And the emperor decides it's time to unite them. So he creates the Primarchs, 20 of his glorious sons created from his own superhuman genetics. And the chaos gods see this plan that will eventually destroy them. So they hatch a plan, corrupting the emperor's favored Primarch and son, Horus Lupercal, and turning him against the emperor. They duel it out. And in this battle, Horus delivers mortal blows to the Emperor. His body is shattered, his arm severed. But upon that grievous wound, the Emperor stops holding back. He destroys Horus, the Emperor has won. But in his weakened state, he can only be kept alive by being permanently plugged in to the Golden Throne. A horrible life support machine. A thousand souls of psychically attuned humans die fueling this machine every single day just to keep the Emperor alive. Have fun. All right, thank you. Yeah. Now this one, this artwork is like the classic, the Emperor canon piece, but there's a few others here that are really cool. And the thing that they all have in common are these skulls embedded in the arms of the throne. Because we have all these skulls that we can cut up to put on the surface of the front of the throne. I reckon we can use this cutout as a template to get a cardboard backing and build it all separately so we can just put them in. So that's the template and I have a ladder somewhere. <laughs> An emperor's head for you, Murray. Because I would also like if you would do me the honors of making him a cybernetic eye. Okay. S something small. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> To create these scully inserts in the front of the throne, I need this template that I can slot in later, which will make the whole process a lot easier. By alternating the angle at which I cut the skulls, I can sort of determine which way they're gonna face when they're attached to the inset. So I have been tasked with making the face of the Emperor, the big E himself, and I need to create this big optic that is over his damaged eye. And to do that, I'm gonna grab all these little doodads and bib bobs, and I'm going to construct some sort of mechanical device interface and big glowing optic. Meanwhile, we've weathered up these white bed sheets and these red tablecloths for an ancient but regal feel. And now is the part where I just need to fill this thing with texture, the whole throne. I love the shape of it, but it's time to make it look all sorts of sci-fi and grimdark. 
This step is called greebling. I don't know why or where that term originates. Lucasfilm. Lucasfilm. George Lucas coined it. Really? Which is perfect because this is all very sci-fi and I'm usually used to this process being with plastic art at very small scales with popsicle sticks and matchsticks. This, uh, this is bigger. So I'm literally using like old spa filters and cups and large sheets of corrugated cardboard and styrofoam packaging and entire sections of sink pipes. All of this to add a lot more flavor and detail and to give me ports that pipes will be coming out of. But we'll get to that in a second. Next, I want to see what the Emperor looks like with some robes on. Are they the Emperor's new clothes? <laughs> this is a lot of the base detail done, but most of the detail, if you come here and look at all my references, all of these have a huge amount of detail in one particular way. Any guesses? Pipes! Pipes. That's right. Pipes. There is something I really want to do with this whole thing when it's done and for it to work I need to be able to pull it apart into separate sections Which will be pretty tricky because everything will be very intertwined But to make it look right, I just need a huge mess of pipes. So let's get piping Now unsurprisingly this was the longest and fiddliest project Placing, gluing, and weaving all of these tubes into where the Emperor's head will be. It was a painful process where I burned myself and cut myself and stretched my aching back to have all of those tubes go where they need to go. But hey, it's the Emperor. He demands sacrifices of the flesh. As we know, we love some meaningful nonsense here on the channel. And to celebrate Halloween and empower your nonsensical creativity, I am having a 10% off of everything sale on the jazzastudios.com shop. Yes, everything, including the merch I just dropped, Meaningful Nonsense, which you guys have loved so far, which is so cool to see. And the customizer kit, which has already been discounted down to $99. That's right, with 10% off, it's now $89, but just for this weekend. The customizer kit is your way to turn anything that you own that's boring and lame into something really cool, especially with all the stuff that comes in the kit. That comes with a whole bunch of activities and a guidebook that you can follow to make a load of fun custom stuff. So go check it out. It's an amazing present for a family member or a loved one. And with a huge discount, it's also thinking ahead for certain other holiday seasons, which we won't mention in this video, because this is the spooky video. The most wonderful time of year. Check it out, 10% off jazzestudios.com. Support the channel and support your creativity. <laughs> The very last details are gonna help transform some of these blanker, flatter looking edges simply by putting little push pins all the way around the edges and around the corners and sides. But when paint's on it, it's gonna look gold. You know a project is awesome where I'm in the end zone and in these updates I just wanna go, ah, and ah, so cool. This is a lot, this is so much. Why do I keep doing this? Okay. Paint time. The bigger the projects get, the more I have to change up the tools I'm using. I've nearly always just hand painted or aerosoled the base coats. I'm long overdue for getting something like this. I've never used it before. I hope it's easy and works well, but it's a paint sprayer. Fill that with paint, you paint it. But I can't just paint it as it is. The Emperor is gonna be painted separately. So I am going to untube him. Another reason I've kept everything separatable because he will be aerosoled and touched up by hand. Healing. But I'm gonna attack this in multiple layers of paint. The first one is like a gray primer sealer undercoat, then a layer of black all over, and then we get to the coloring. Why has no one told me about these paint spray guns before? It's so damn good. The thing that's striking me is really bizarre with this whole massive project is every step that I've taken has been exactly the same as the steps I take when I do this with miniatures. The first coat that went down made the whole thing look like a big gray plastic sprue. The black base on top of that really just looks like I've hit the whole thing with an Abaddon black base paint. Well, that's gonna be left to dry until tomorrow. We still have our Emperor to paint. Starting off with a base coat of dark brown. 
Then I add a little bit of misting of some red in some places just to add a little bit of a fleshy feel underneath the next coat, which will be a sort of bone white that I give the whole thing a vibrant pop with. I actually popped in on the weekend to give it a once over with a zenithal coat with a sprayed brown. This brown will act as a really good foundation for all of the gold that was to come and the grimier, earthier colours, whether it be, say, a red in the throne or the bone colours in the skulls. And then arriving back the next week with that all dry, it's time to get stuck into all of that satisfying spraying. With a base coat of a bronze over what will become all of the metallic areas. It's been almost a week since I started this project and I can hardly believe I'm looking at the throne. If I walked in the room and saw this, I'd be like, hey, that's the freaking throne and it doesn't even have the emperor on it. I'm so chuffed and so happy and we're on the home stretch and this is my favorite part of any project because every single step makes a huge difference. So I'm gonna get Murray's help to take this over the finish line as well as Amy's to bring the emperor together. So Amy's in the other room working on the washes for the Emperor. A whole bunch of grimy, brown, wet undertones that will dry, making the Emperor look like he's not actively decaying, but that has been slowly mummified for over 10,000 years. Meanwhile, Murray and I have been dividing and conquering the various areas of the throne. Murray jumping back into those skull insets that he'd first created and working his way up to the bone. Meanwhile, I move on to creating a silvery sheen, differentiating the pipes from the rest of the gold of the throne, and then giving a bit more of a luxurious feel to the cushion of the throne with a bit of a dry brushed red into all of those hard to reach but cushier looking places. Now the Emperor's not completely done yet, we still have to paint his eyepiece, which is where Murray comes in, facing it with black and working all the way over it with metallics, finishing off this eyepiece which really brings the Emperor together in a way that just feels so retro and so 40k. And then it's on to the rest of the throne with touches of grimy detail. At long last, it's time for all of the pieces to finally come together. I don the Emperor in his holy robes that have been decaying with him for 10,000 years. Ready to mark how the trillions of souls in the galaxy worship the God Corpse on the Golden Throne. This is usually the part where I say, this is one of the coolest things I've ever made and sign off and all that, which I mean, it is one of the coolest things I've ever made, which is actually why I'm not signing off right now because it's so cool that I don't want to chuck it out. One of the last awesome massive things I did, the Zelda board, we had nowhere to put it. I would have loved to mount it high on a wall or something. It just would be too expensive and pretty impossible. So we had to break it down. It doesn't exist anymore. But in the past, I've put some of my largest creations up here, I don't know if there's room for this anywhere else, so maybe these are gonna go into the bin. 
Sorry, Toothless. The Iron Giant. Another large, one-day build that pales in comparison to the Emperor. The Emperor demands sacrifice. I made this whole thing so it's still separatable because I really wanted to do this. Oh, the Emperor! It's fine, I'm sure it's fine. There you go. Look at that. Oh, okay, we're halfway done. We're gonna have overhang. Oh. This thing is taller than I expect. That's it. It's a workout. Give me a hand. Cheers. This is the part where if I ask you to like click the like button, I really hope like you consider it because I'm really working real hard to make sure you're entertained and we have cool stuff around on this channel for you. So that would be super awesome. He said drenched in sweat, hoping that that would guilt you into doing something. <laughs> <sighs> that was so stupid. Oh my God, but it was worth it. That is so cool, that's an ornament in our building now. Every time we walk in here, the emperor reigns over us in his glory and we send him our sacrifices of creative madness. May this tribute be worthy of you, my lord. Now, two last treats to share with you. The first is that there is gonna be a friend to live with the emperor. This was created by my friends over at Tabletop Time who have helped out with this video, Murray and Dave and Jen, who's also worked on this, have created a servo skull, which is another 40K lore themed thing that serves the emperor and the Imperium eternally. Look at this thing, it's so good. So if you wanna see how this was made and watch the whole process, head on over to Tabletop Time and subscribe while you're there because they dive into the 40k stuff in a way that I simply can't here on this channel. But that's not even the best bit. I've saved the absolute best bit for last. It's still plugged in. Speak, Emperor. Welcome to my stylish haunted home. I can't take all the credit for its trendy appeal. The maniacal fancy in the closet deserves some praise.